Which of these bulbs will shine and why? Pause the movie while you answer that. C will shine because we have a complete circuit. In C we have the two requirements for current to flow. There's an energy source provided by the battery that gives a potential difference between the two terminals of the battery. And then we have a complete conducting path between those two. And the complete conducting path passes through the bulb filament. So the complete conducting path includes the bulb. That's why the bulb does shine. So the potential difference from the energy source pushes charges that are in the circuit around and so we get electric current flowing. In contrast, D and E are broken circuits. No current will flow in any part of the circuit, whether through the bulb or through some other part. There will not be current flowing. Why not? Although we have the first requirement for current to flow, we do have an energy source. We do not have the second requirement, a complete conducting path between the two terminals of the battery. This is a positive terminal, this is the negative terminal, and there we have a conducting path, but it stops there because the glass of the bulb is an insulator. It is not a conductor. It's not a good conductor. It's not a bad conductor. It's not a conductor at all. It's an insulator. And so we have a broken section in the circuit. In E, we don't even have a path to the negative terminal, so no current will flow at all. Here's another example of a broken circuit. We have a switch which is open. Current will not flow anywhere. We can think of this like a water circuit where we have a pump here, we have pipes, water inside the pipes, but here we have a tap and the tap is closed. A closed tap is like an open switch. So you know that if you close the tap, the water can't flow anywhere in the pipes until you open the tap. Similarly, in electricity, you have to close that switch and then the current will flow, as you can see, by the bulb shining. So this here is a broken circuit. You mustn't think that the current will flow for the first part of the circuit and then stop. No! It doesn't flow anywhere. It cannot flow anywhere. It's like if you have marbles in a groove. If you push this marble, all the marbles will move at the same rate as one another. But if you put something in the way of this marble here, a piece of cardboard across the groove. Now, even though you push, none of the marbles will move. It's not that these marbles will move and then stop there. No. How will they move on top of the others? No. They cannot move on top of one another. They cannot move squashing into one another because they are incompressible. None of them will move at all, even though you push. And that's similar to a broken circuit. The current doesn't flow anywhere. Here's another example of a broken circuit. We have two switches here, and they're both open. These bulbs will not shine. Even if you were to close this one, S2, still it's a broken circuit. These bulbs will not shine. These two circuits, A and B, do have current flowing through them, but they have short circuits. What does this mean? Let's first see why I say that there is current flowing through these two. The two requirements for current to flow are met here. We have an energy source created a potential difference between the two terminals of the battery and we have a complete conducting path between the two terminals so current will flow around the circuit the problem though is that the bulb is not part of the circuit in either case and so the bulb will not shine these are called short circuits not because the wires are short you can have a very long wire here it will still be a short circuit the short part doesn't refer to length. It means easy, very easy circuit, very low resistance. Theoretically, zero resistance because these wires are meant to have no resistance. So what would happen in these short circuits is that the battery would get flat very quickly. Why? Because of the short circuit, it's a very easy path for the current to flow. A lot of current will flow and that will cause the battery to get flat very quickly. Let's look at this circuit as well. Please do not build this circuit because your battery will get flat. But here we have a 1.5 volt battery and it's connected to two bulbs. So if we only had this part here of the circuit, that would be a complete circuit with the bulbs shining. However, across the battery we have placed a switch. Now at the moment that's not a problem because the switch is open. But the moment that we close that switch, then this path here is 
a short circuit across the cell. And so when the charge must make its choice, must it go around there or should it go around the circuit? None of the current will choose that difficult path around the circuit. All of it will go through this extremely easy path, this short circuit. And so your bulbs will not shine and your battery will get flat very quickly. So this is a short circuit across the cell. Let's look at this circuit here. Again, we have the 1.5 volt cell and it is connected to two bulbs. And then we have a switch which is open at the moment. Now across this bulb, we have another switch which is open. Now let's say we close this first switch so that we do have a complete circuit over there. The bulbs will shine if the rest of the circuit wasn't there, the bulbs would shine. But since we have this section in parallel, this bulb is not going to shine. Why? Because you see the charge here, it must make a choice through this path, which has no resistance, and this path, which has some resistance. None of the charge chooses to go through L1. It all rather chooses to go through this very easy path this short circuit. So in this case, it's not a short circuit across the cell. It's not going to make the cell flat like we saw before. It's a short circuit across this bulb, L1. And so it causes L1 to be bypassed, short-circuited, not included in the circuit. And so L1 will not shine in this case.